Hi, this is Gautam. Welcome to the first episode on the Karnataka book list. For this first episode, we'll be looking at this book, Avarana, The Veil, written by S.L. Bhairapha, and it is translated from, Karan, from Kannada to English by Sandeep Balakrishna. Now, I want you to know that when this novel was published in the year 2007, it stirred up a lot of controversy. In, for, in fact, there was a spat between author S.L. Bhairapha and one more Kannada stalwart, literary stalwart, you are Anantamurti. So since this novel is controversial, if you're watching this review, I would like you to stay till the end so that we could have an objective discussion. Lakshmi, an educated, intellectual woman, decides to marry Amir against her father's wishes. Now, in spite of the fact that uh, Amir, is, uh, consider, Amir considers himself as an intellectual, he convinces Lakshmi that uh, if the marriage has to be accepted by his parents, then she has to convert uh, to his religion. Now, after serious thought, uh, coming to an understanding that this religious conversion is only for the purpose of marriage and does not really mean anything, Lakshmi converts into Razia and marries Amir. Razia understands that even though Amir claimed to be a liberal intellectual, things are not how it was supposed to be. As days becomes weeks and months, there is continuous insistence that Razia practice her religion by not just by Amir but also her in-laws. As time progresses, Razia makes subtle but the necessary changes. And the important turning point comes 28 years after their marriage, that is when Lakshmi alias Razia's father dies. Razia did not visit her ancestral village in the last 28 years and when she goes there after her father's demise, she is really surprised to discover notations, publications and several books in her father's collection. In fact, he has been studying Indian history for, the, for more than two decades. And when she goes through that material, we get an interesting turn in the novel as exactly what did Razia learn when she goes to her father's notes? Does her perception or view of Indian history change? How does this new understanding affect her relationship with both her husband Amir and her son who is presently a grown man? And uh, why does Razia decide to write a new novel and what is the concept or what is the story in this novel within S.L. Bhairapa's novel Avarana? The first discussion which the novel wants to take up is the fact that several of the points or discussions when it comes to Indian history in both academia and in the textbooks are not completely revealed. For example, when Razia goes through the notes collected by her father, she comes across a different, per com comes across a different perspective on Tipu Sultan. Now, Tipu Sultan today is a dichotomous figure. We look at him in two dimensions. The first is he was a visionary uh, leader, uh, you know, a very good military commander who really wanted to take down the British. On the other hand, there are facts which support the statement that he might have been a religious bigot. So this, on these two, two dimensions, the second set of facts which support the argument will not be present in most textbooks. The second is the concept of religious conversion during marriage. There is this discussion in the start of the novel we get between Lakshmi and her father, where her father uh, talks to Lakshmi, well, if, if your love is, uh, is so deep and if Amir is in real love with you, then he shouldn't be demanding religious conversion. Now, I'm pretty sure that most of the viewers would know that this is a topic which is in discourse in India, not just among common men, uh, you know, in, 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 the, in the common discourse, but also is a very important topic when it comes to Indian politics. The third theme is regarding triple talaq and polygamy in Islam. And as we speak, you know, this, this novel was written in 2007 and then translated in 2014. Presently, triple talaq is, uh, has been made illegal in India. So these are the broad three themes which the novel, which the novel wants to address uh, in detail. And even the novel which Razia likes to write, you know, which is again, the two stories, uh, you know, travel parallelly. And we see how uh, Vijayanagar Empire and Hampi become, becomes an important uh, compass, uh, you know, for, for guiding the novel. So apart from this, I personally felt there are two to three areas in which the author should have or definitely could have done better. In this novel, except for Lakshmi alias Razia, every other character uh, seems to be portrayed as shallow or not really, uh, you know, being to change. Now, when you start writing characters which, which are not ready to change except for one single character art, there are challenges that this might simply be dismissed as propaganda rather than an honest discussion which the author likes to talk about at the start of the novel. 
Now, in this novel, we get a discussion, we get a theme where Razia is in a conference and she likes to contradict most of the major historians and she presents facts for these particular type of ideas. And when this happens, she is shunned down and she's branded as communal. Now, let's take this, uh, let's take this idea. If the author's objective is to present the fact that history is propagated based on what the ruling dispensation or the ruling government wants, then in fact, depending on the change in ruling government, what is considered as acceptable history or what is not, what is not acceptable will actually change. Uh, in fact, uh, because of the change in political scenario between when the novel was published and the scenario today, the phenomenon has remained the same. Uh, whatever the ruling dispensation wants, that gets propagated and what needs to be shunned down will get shunned down. So in that, both sides are actually true. Now, leaving these uh, plot points alone, the first three themes which I discussed, the novel runs in the trouble with these shallow characters because instead of complex ones, if we have a uh, character development as white and black, then the novel simply falls into the trap of uh, maybe be becoming a propaganda, you know, of glorification of the past and self-sympathy and an open debate on Hinduism versus Islam instead of really exploring uh, the truth or the objective or the objective truth which the author tries to find uh, in this novel or what the author claims is the objective of the novel. So whatever be your political position, uh, I definitely recommend this novel because even though it is controversial, you, whether you are for or against it, at the end of the day you will have to read it to take a stand on for or against it. So this is the first episode on the Karnataka book list. And, uh, you know, in the subsequent episodes, uh, along with the parallel reading of other books, we'll also have books on Karnataka. That's it for now.